Hi, this is Sora, and for today's UI workshop, we're going to be talking about Grid. What is Grid, you ask? Well, Grid is essentially a RAID frame replacement that has the ability to display a lot of information in a condensed space. Out of the box, Grid can display health, incoming heals, aggro, threat, low mana warnings, buffs, debuffs, range, and ready checks. Grid is easily extendable as well, as there are many additional modules that can be downloaded that add features like boss debuffs, mana bars, more side indicator positions, raid icons, and more. Grid is a fairly popular add-on, especially among healers who combine Grid with the click casting functionality of an add-on like Click or who use mouse over macros. As you'll see, however, non-healers can find plenty of value in Grid as well. Since Grid is highly flexible and has many configuration options, it can be pretty daunting when you're first installing it. But have no fear, Learn to Raid is here. This guide is in three parts. The first part will be the longest and will cover all the basic settings of Grid. For part 2, I'll talk about some of the most popular modules that people download, and for part 3, I'll run into Alteric Valley, so you can see Grid in action. I'll also talk about reasons why non-healers might be interested in Grid, and I'll give you some ideas on where to place it in your UI. So go ahead and grab a cup of coffee, tea, or kungaloosh, because up next we're going to talk about setting up Grid. When you first install Grid, you'll notice a mini-map icon that looks like multicolored bubbles or a ball pit. Right-click on this icon, or type slash grid, to open up the configuration menu. As you can see, it's broken up into four sections, frame, indicators, layout, and status. There is also a profiles tab where you can manage your profiles, and a debugging tab that you can pretty much forget about. First up on the frame tab are options that will let you adjust the width and height of each unit. Corner size adjusts the size of the corner indicators. Quarter indicators are essentially those little colored squares that you see on individual player frames in your raid. Border size adjusts the width of the border indicators on each unit. For example, by default there is a border indicator set up for your current target. You can see this now when I'm clicking on my own unit. You can also choose to see tooltips of the player unit always, never, or out of combat. Orientation of frame is really the orientation of the health bar, letting you choose between having either a horizontal or vertical health bar. This means that the health bar will grow up the more health you have if it's set to vertical, or it will grow to the right if it's set to horizontal. Orientation of text is a little tricky. At first the differences between horizontal and vertical are minimal. Horizontal appears to leave the text more aligned to the left, while vertical aligns it more to the middle. However, if you choose to enable the center text 2 indicator, horizontal will have both texts on the same line, which can be problematic depending on the font size or how much text you have. For now, I would recommend leaving this set to vertical. The mouse over highlight will add a subtle glow to a unit frame when your mouse hovers over it. Checking enable health bar color indicator will allow you to customize the color of the health bar based on various status settings. For example, you could change your health bar color to be purple when the target is afflicted by a curse debuff. Enable Sensor Text 2 indicator will add a second line of text on each unit that you can customize as well. For example, you could have the unit health displayed there. Throttle Updates is an option you should check off if you are noticing freezing or lockups when people join or leave your group. Otherwise, it's safe to leave this unchecked. In the Bar Options section, you can choose which texture you would like your health bar to have. The list here will be generated based off the textures you already have installed. By default there aren't that many, but there are many more options that you can download. I will provide a link at the bottom to some texture packs that I have used. Healing Bar Opacity adjusts how transparent or solid the healing bar appears. The healing bar by default shows a green bar based on the size of an incoming heal. This is pretty handy for healers. The Invert Bar Color option is pretty self-explanatory, swapping the background and foreground colors. You also have customization options for the center icon, which will appear based on your indicator settings. The default icons that show up in the center are for Curse, Disease, Magic, and Poison debuffs, as well as the Ready Check status. This slider bar lets you change the size of the icon, while the second one adjusts the size of the icon border. Typically, the icon border will appear as a certain color depending on what type of icon it is. For example, if it's a heal, it'll show up as green, while a debuff will be red. Having it set to zero will turn off the border altogether. If you check Enable Icon Cooldown Frame, the middle icon will show a cooldown clock sweep similar to what your ability buttons show in the default UI. Enable Icon Stack Text will show the number of stacks for whichever ability you set it to track. The text options are pretty easy. 
Here you can choose the font, font size, outline, shadow, and the character length displayed in the center text. If you want to see more than five letters, try increasing the frame width or lowering the font size. Now let's take a look at the Indicators tab. Here is where you'll be able to pick which statuses you'd like to display for each indicator. For example, by default, a border will be displayed on whichever player you are currently targeting and it will also appear as a low health and low mana warning. Let's take a look at what the low health warning setup looks like. Click on Health, then on Low HP Warning. As you can see, the color of the border is set to white and will trigger when the player's health is below 80%. It has a priority of 30, which means that if any other borders are set with a higher priority, it will not show up until they are gone. A priority level of 1 is the highest, while 99 is the lowest. If we go down to target, you'll see that it also has a white color by default. However, the priority is 99. Since the target border has a lower priority than the low HP warning, you won't see it until the low HP warning is gone, as well as any other borders who have a higher priority than 99. Let's go back to indicators for a little bit. Currently, you can customize indicators for the border, health bar color, the healing bar, the center text, and center icon, each corner of a unit, and the frame alpha. Frame alpha controls the transparency of a unit. By default, the unit will fade when the player is offline, dead, or out of range. Grid's default indicator settings are pretty sensible, however I still encourage you to go through and check out all the settings. I'll get into that somewhere later, but first let's go over to the Layout tab. The six drop-down menus here allow you to choose what sort of display you'd want to be shown, depending on how many people are in your group and whether or not you'd like to see pets. Checking off horizontal groups will lay out each group from left to right, instead of up and down. If you want to reposition grid, you'll have to uncheck frame lock first. It can be surprisingly easy to accidentally move grid while you're trying to click on other things in the game, so I would definitely lock it into place once you're happy with where it's at. Hide tab is pretty obvious, it will hide the grid label. Clamped to screen is checked off by default. If for some reason you want to move grid partly off the screen, you'll have to uncheck this option. Layout anchor. This setting controls how grid is anchored on the screen. The default setting of top left means that the top left corner of grid is fixed in place, and the frame grows downward and to the right as more groups or units are added. Group anchor will determine the way new groups are added to grid. The default value is top left as well, which means that the top left corner of each group is attached to the previous group. In general, I think it's safe to leave these two settings as their default and change them once you feel more comfortable with the intricacies of grid. Padding controls the distance between each individual unit, while spacing controls the distance between each group and the borders surrounding grid. Adjusting scale will either increase or decrease the size of everything within grid, and it's a quick way to make it larger or smaller without having to go in and tinker with every setting. Just keep in mind that it scales everything, including text and corner indicators. By default, grid uses the Blizzard tooltip border, but you can change it or you can remove it completely by selecting none. Border color unsurprisingly adjusts the color of the border that you've chosen, and background color adjusts the color of grid's background. It does not, however, change the color of the health bars. So to change the health bar color in its normal state, you'll need to go to the status tab, expand health, click on unit health, uncheck class color, and adjust the color setting to be whatever you like. Finishing up the layout tab is the reset position button. This can be handy if you somehow lose grid on your screen. Pressing it will bring grid back to the center. The status section is where you can fine tune the appearance of the various statuses that you have set to show up through the indicators tab. Remember for a status to show up, it has to be first enabled through an indicator. Going over each status would take quite a long time, so let's just pick one as an example. Let's say you're a disciplined priest who wants to know who has the debuff Weakened Soul. First you need to figure out how you want to have it displayed. I'm going to choose the bottom right corner indicator and I'll check off Debuff Type Weakened Soul. Now I'll head over to Status and Expand Auras and select Debuff Weakened Soul. Then I'll pick a color I want the indicator to be. I don't have to worry about the priority at this moment since currently I don't have any other statuses that will display in the bottom right corner. Checking off range filter will disable the status if the target is out of range. Show duration will give you a timer for the indicator, however it currently only works when the indicator is the center icon. Class filters allow you to control whether or not a status will show for various classes. So to sum up this indicator, a little pink box will show in the bottom right corner of a unit if the unit is affected by weakened soul. It will show up even if they are out of range, and it will display for all classes. 
Now let's talk about profiles. The first thing you'll probably notice is the Reset Profile button. This essentially resets the current profile back to its original state. Be careful when using this because there's no way to undo it. Clicking the drop down list under Existing Profiles will let you choose which profile is currently active. You can create a new empty profile by typing in a profile name in the new box. The benefit of using profiles is that you can use a different profile for each tune that you have. You may want to have different grid settings for your Death Knight than you do for your Druid. If you'd like to use different grid profiles based on spec, here you can check off Enable Dual Profile and then select the second profile you've created from the list. When you switch to your second spec, this profile will automatically load for you. If you like the majority of the settings for one profile, but just want to tweak a few things to make a new profile, you can copy one profile over into your currently active one, saving a good chunk of time. If you wish to delete a profile altogether, select it from this drop-down list. The debugging tab isn't really something that you should be worried about at this point in time. It's mostly there for the convenience of the add-on programmers when troubleshooting. So now that we've covered the basics of Grid, let's talk about how to extend its functionality. There are many user-created modules for Grid that are downloaded and installed separately. For healers especially, the basic functionality of Grid will not be enough to suit their needs. For example, many popular modules that are downloaded are Grid Status Raid Debuff, Grid Status RDCATA, Grid Status Raid Icons, Grid Indicator Side Icons, and Grid Mana Bars. Let's take a quick look through at what these do. Grid Status Raid Debuff adds in the Raid Debuff category in the Status tab, which when combined with Grid Status RD Kata will allow Grid to show debuffs applied by current raid bosses. If you want to see raid debuffs from earlier content, you'll have to download those separately. By now you should be familiar with these settings, though one that might be of particular interest is the Center Icon option which is checked by default. If you don't want the Raid Debuff icon to be displayed in the center, simply uncheck it, go to the Indicators tab, and pick a new indicator for it. As you can see, each boss debuff has its own configuration that you can tweak as you like, or disable completely if you don't want to track it. You can also link the spell in the chat window by clicking the Link button with the chat box active. With Grid Mana Bars installed, you'll see an additional tab called Mana Bar with a simple configuration. You just need to decide which side you want the bar to be on and how thick you'd like it. As you can see, a new tab has appeared called Icon Sides thanks to the Grid Indicator Side Icons module. It even comes with a configuration mode. If you check off Configuration Mode, it will place dummy icons that will give you a basic idea of how it will look. Offset X Axis Top Bottom will move the top or bottom icon positions left or right and Offset Y Axis Top Bottom will move farther away or closer towards the center. Offset X Axis Left Right will move the side icons farther away or closer towards the center, and Offset Y Axis Left Right will move them up or down. If you check off Same Settings as Grid, it will disable the settings below and copy whatever settings you have set in the Frame tab Icon Options. However, if you'd like the side indicators to display differently, you can leave this option unchecked and adjust the following preferences. Icon border size will increase or decrease the size of the icon border naturally. Checking off enable icon cooldown frame will show the cooldown timer for that particular status, and enabling the icon stack text will show a number for the amount of stacks the status has. Checking off enable icon stack text unlocks further settings for stack text font size and stack text offset. At the bottom, you can adjust the size of each individual icon as well. Grid status raid icons will add two status options, raid target icon player and raid target icon player target. These will place raid icons on each unit based either on which player is marked or if a player is targeting something that is marked. Remember that to get these statuses to show up, you need to assign them an indicator spot. So head over to indicators and choose one, like our new top icon. Alright, so that covers a few of the modules that you might find beneficial to use with Grid. Now let's talk about how to use it. Most of the players who use Grid are healers, but this doesn't mean that DPS or tanks can't use it either. You can use Grid to convey a lot of information in a small space, which means that you're freeing up more of your screen to see other things, like the fire you shouldn't be standing in. At a glance, you can see who is AFK, dead, out of range, who is low on mana, and who is aggro. In addition to healing spells, there are some abilities that you can use with click casting or a mouse over macro that you might not have thought of. 
Here's a list of some abilities that I think might be useful when paired with Grid. Also, consider crowd control spells or interrupts for when people are mind controlled. Keep in mind that by itself, Grid does not have click casting. If you're wondering what click casting is, it's when you cast a spell by simply clicking on a unit frame using your mouse buttons and modifiers. Luckily, there are other add-ons that make click casting easy. The most popular one that is easy to configure is click. For example, you could set up the left click mouse button to be flash of light and shift left click to be holy light. Another way to combine spell use with grid is to use mouse over macros. Mouse over macros let you cast a spell that is bound to a key by just hovering your mouse over a unit frame and hitting that specific key. I'll provide a link below to a guide to mouse over macros. It's a few years old, but it's a good place to start and it's easy to read. You should also think about hiding the standard Blizzard raid frames, since you don't want two sets of raid frames cluttering your screen. While Grid currently does not have this feature, there are a number of other add-ons that have this functionality built in, like Move Anything, Hide Blizzard, and Pitbull. Now that we've covered how to set up Grid, let's see it in action. Alright, here we are in Alteric Valley. If you'll notice, the Blizzard raid frames are showing up because I currently don't have any other add-ons that are disabling them for me. Hopefully you'll recognize some of the indicators that we talked about before, such as units fading when out of range, the horizontal health bar, mana bars from the grid mana bars module, debuffs as a center icon, and the little pink square for weakened soul. While we're here, let's talk about where to place grid in your UI. Where you want grid will depend on what role you play. If you're a healer, you'll want Grid to be in a prominent position that allows you to see what's going on around you and gives you an unobstructed view of your character. The most common placements are right below your character's feet or directly to the left or the right. There are benefits to either placement. Having raid frames at the bottom of your feet gives you more screen real estate to work with and obscures less of the raiding environment. Having them to the immediate left or right of your character might help healers who have tunnel vision problems, since your character can more easily be seen in your peripheral vision. Raid leaders might want to have Grid in a more noticeable spot as well, so that you can easily see who has debuffs, if a healer has died, and so on. Otherwise, you can tuck away Grid someplace out of the way, yet still accessible for when you need to cast the occasional buff or decurse. Well, that pretty much covers everything you need to know about Grid. I hope this guide has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know over at the Learn to Raid forums. If you would like to nominate an add-on for the next UI workshop, please go to learntoraid.com slash forum slash UI suggest. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and watch us on Twitch TV. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Up in front of my phonograph. And I slept there.